Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And honors to you, brothers out there in the highways and the byways, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And um, real quick, Sirach, the 30th chapter and the 15th verse, it says, Health and good estate of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. Now, we know that, you know, we, through sin, you know, through transgression, this earth is uh, is defiled. Therefore, these bodies are defiled, you know. The, our bodies are being poisoned every day from the air, from the food, you know, from the water, the things we drink. But nevertheless, man, we got to do our best to take care of these bodies because for now, that's all we got, you know. And um, so what I've been doing is... Um, I've started to make my own kefir because I was doing some research going into the gut. You know, like uh, the first person I heard say it was uh, Apostle Taha. And he was speaking about how a lot of disease starts with your gut. And then that also goes back to your diet. So, you know, uh, a lot of issues that you have, whether it be IBS, you know, a lot of issues lead back to basically your gut being out of order, out of balance, you know, being filled with the parasites and harmful bacteria all right now you know a good way to turn that around is to do a, a, a colon cleanse there's various different forms of colon cleanses you can do detoxes but then after you do that colon cleanse and that detox to try and um, reduce the bad bacteria and and and, and, and um uh, 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 colonial mucus and all that stuff that's backed up inside you you, what you want to do is um, switch up your diet to provide a good environment um, for good flora. And, and that's where you get, uh, um, you know, you eat the right foods. you got certain called prebiotics, which is foods that um, help the growth of um, certain bacteria. And then you got probiotics, and those are foods which contain uh, good bacteria for your gut. Um, mostly fermented foods. And, and and not that, you know, a lot of the, the fermented foods you get in the store, they've been pasteurized. So a lot of the good bacteria in them is dead. They, they literally fermented them only for the taste. So the best ferments is basically the ferments that you make yourself. And what you can do is you can, um, when you're making the ferments, if it's not kefir, say you're making like sauerkraut or some other form of pickled, like um, what I got here. Uh, let me show you. What I got here. This is um, this is uh, some um, carrot. See, that's bubbling, you know. <laughs> that's uh, some carrot pickle that I've made with some chilies in there, and I basically made that. You make it by you know adding salt, water, um, a bit of apple cider vinegar, and then you put a, a tablet of a good probiotic tablet in there with some sugar. Or some honey and what it is is that the sugar helps the bacteria to grow rapidly and then the bacteria start breaking down the sugars and stuff in the carrots and living in the carrots so this becomes a superfood it becomes filled with good bacteria very extremely healthy for your gut all right so that's one form of ferment that you can do for yourself and you can you can google it there's plenty of videos um online about how to make sauerkraut i got a sauerkraut here just give me a second i got a sauerkraut here that i'm making with the red cabbage and that's got chili in there as well i got a, a chili in there to give it a little heat and that's a sauerkraut that's that's almost ready to start eating and that's going to be filled with um all that good bacteria i bought i bought uh online you, you get it like in a capsule but the thing is with with those ones you can take the capsules but those bacteria in the capsules are dormant and there's no guarantee that they're gonna survive when they go into your stomach and then into your gut so that's why you take those capsules and you put it in a ferment and let them grow you farm them in the ferment you know which i'll, I'll post some videos going into it and and that's a good way to get them friendly bacteria back into your gut um in your diet right now another way which i find is very easy and simple is what i got here which is the kefir 
All right, now these are in here, looks like cottage cheese. Because I've strained this from the last batch I just made. And, and they're already growing. This is, this is already growing, right? These grains, they call them grains, but it's not grains. What it is is that the, the key for bacterias, which are, are um, good bacterias for inside your stomach, for your gut, they as they uh, digest the milk, and you can use different various types of milk. Um, you can use coconut milk, almond milk. But to be honest with you, the best milk to get the most benefits and minerals and so forth out of it is goat milk or cow's milk. Raw if you can. Um, but you can grow, you can use almond milk, but they won't grow. They won't, you won't get more. See, what you can do with the kefir is as they grow and, and, and you get so much that, 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 that you don't need, you can actually give it to somebody else and they can start using it and growing it for themselves and so on and so forth. But basically, yeah, these are already starting, these are already growing and I think I've only had it for like maybe a week and a bit and I can visibly see that the amount that I have is growing. So the bacteria is actually creating these structures to live in. And um, I'm going to show you the process. It's very easy and simple. So this is from the last batch that I've strained. And I'm simply going to put it in my jar container. Okay. So that's the, the grains in my container. And then I get my milk. Now you can use whole milk. You can use semi-milk. You can use skimmed milk. Obviously, depending on your calories. I, I'm using semi-skim because... I want to, you know, reduce some of the calories which is in the fat because when you create kefir, it doesn't change the, the fat content of the milk. However, let me just pour this in without getting this milk everywhere. I'm going to, this is like a, a litre jar. So, okay, we're good. Right, so with the kefir, what it does is it, it breaks down the lactose in the milk. So if you're lactose intolerant, you can still drink kefir because naturally the bacteria, the kefir bacteria break down the lactose. All right, which also reduces the sugar content. Oh, put that over the top. Reduces the sugar content of the milk, which reduces the calories. So it's good for if you're lactose intolerant and it also reduces your sugar intake. All right. And that's it. That's all you got to do. You, you, you cover it. Now, some people, they might use th this type of cover and cover it completely. Depending on how much air gets to the kefir, you might get some alcohol production in the kefir. I like to just cover it with a paper towel. Um, they say... You can get cross contamination with other yeast and so forth you may have in the house, but which could affect the flavor and the color. But mine, mine is fine. So I just use the paper towel with a band around there, and literally, I just put it on my counter, not in the fridge because that'll slow down the process. You put it in on the counter for at least twenty four hours, and it will break this milk down. It will sour the milk and create your kefir. Now the 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 to taste you can you can take it for a day and a half or you can you can let it break down for 48 hours or even longer if you want to create yogurt all right and um pretty much that's how you make the kefir now what i'm going to do is i'll probably do a part two to this when i'm actually um tomorrow when i actually take this kefir out and um and um mix it up into my, into a smoothie and basically, you, you turn it into like a yogurt drink that you buy in the store. The difference is, this is the real deal. This has got the real bacteria in there. It's not been pasteurized or killed or any added sugars. You've made it yourself. And like I said, it's very beneficial for your gut. I'll put some um, uh, links in the description box, Lord willing, or on the comment board. And you can do your own research. But Kefir... It's supposed to be the number one probiotic you can use. And it's very easy. You can you can use it to replace a meal because it's also a very filling. Anyway, so with that, you know, uh, shalom.